Today, as a massive effort to restore wetlands in San Francisco Bay begins, mercury remains at the forefront of concern. San Francisco Bay probably has some of the most extensive wetland restoration going on than anywhere else in the country, and it's a really valuable opportunity. We know that juxtaposed on top of this wetland restoration is a background signal of mercury. And the question for most ecosystem managers that we work with, they want to know, if we expand our wetland and create all this habitat, are we going to be making a methylmercury factory, if you will? Wetland restoration, although it's been happening here since the 70s, or maybe even earlier, it evolved from a practice into a science. So we're really interested in these kinds of zones and those gradients between the sediment and the plant. There's not a lot known in wetlands, and we're just learning more and more about mercury processes in the soil and the environment and the bioaccumulation effects. Salt marshes might be uh, an area where mercury is methylized. However, if it doesn't make it up into the food web, then it might not be as large of a concern. Mercury remains the most pronounced among a myriad of toxins that continue to haunt San Francisco Bay. In the century following hydraulic mining, agriculture would introduce DDT. Industry would introduce other heavy metals and PCBs. And though environmental standards today are vastly improved, the threats to water quality in San Francisco Bay have by no means passed. So there are five main threats to the bay agricultural pollution and runoff, industrial pollution, including chemical, legacy pollution, like from mines and hot sediments, urban stormwater runoff, and sewage. Those are the five big because of urbanization, industrialization, and population of the Bay Area. <laughs> 